My name's John. We have one daughter and son-in-law, now a grandson who's three years old. We've been going to Eagle Creek for about 10 years now. Uh, our daughter kind of brought us that way and we've loved it and stayed. I'm Michelle. We've been married 37 years. Will be this year. Yes, I've known him since I was uh, 15 years old. August 21st was our 35th wedding anniversary. So we thought, well, we'll go to Chicago. We spent a couple days. That day we got up and we ran three miles up and down Lake Michigan. Everything felt great. Well, we came home. The next day I woke up and I had a little bit of tingling in my hands and feet. I'm like, ah, I may have done something in my back. And it progressively got a little bit worse. So we went and saw a chiropractor and she gave me some exercises to do. After about four or five days of that, now it got to the point where my feet felt like they were going to sleep. So we called the Ask a Nurse and she's like, you need to get to the doctor. Why don't you come in Friday at two o'clock? So we go in at two o'clock. By now, she's taking the keys from me because I have no control over my feet and I can't drive. It's a little scary. What do you mean a little scary? Um, let's just say when you slam on the brakes and we about go through the windshield and we're only doing five miles an hour because he can't feel his feet. You're just it's a, Oh, it's just a, it's just a little scary. So anyway, I trusted her judgment and let her drive me to the doctor. Before we left though, I went to put my shirt on and I couldn't button my shirt. I couldn't button my pants. It had gotten to the point where I didn't have any manual dexterity in my hands. So we get to the doctor's office. Dr. Orlando walks in and he goes, I know you've got neuropathy in all four quadrants. I just don't know why. We need to get you in now. I had to get a wheelchair to load him out of it because every second of every moment, he was losing his ability to walk. And it was very frightening. So we get into the hospital. We did a CAT scan, a CT, and a chest x-ray the first, or a back x-ray the first night. This young neurologist walks into our room. He gives me the old one foot in front of the other, and there's, that's just not happening. You know, I'm walking a path about that wide just to be able to stand up. I mean, I'm just literally sobbing. I mean, I can't even talk. And that's probably the first time I really started getting a little bit concerned with seeing the, the look on her face because I have no idea what she's seeing or reading. And then he goes, what I think you have is Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS. And you're like, what is that? The rest of that day we had a, an MRI, a chest x-ray, a port put in my chest, an MRI. And in the middle of the MRI, they decided to do a spinal fluid tap. And by nine o'clock Saturday night, we started the first treatment. So in 28 hours, we go from showing up at the hospital to starting the first treatment. God made sure that there were people with us at all times. Doug and Lisa, who have been our friends for- 30 years. 30 years. They were coming in from out of town. They immediately came up to the hospital. John's brother and his wife were coming back from Springfield. God just never left us alone. At one point, John's mom is there at the hospital and John and Linda. Yeah. Drake are there. And I've always called our prayer warriors. So if you want prayer, man, you go you go to where you know is going to be there. So we got we we sent a message to John and Linda and then they happened to be up there at the same time that John's mom was up there at the hospital. They had church. The doctors they they knew who we were. There was no doubt of what our faith was, what our belief was. Plasma phresis treatments, they line them up as 5 to 7 treatments and it's a treatment every other day. Because with each plasma phoresis treatment, they take out about 65% of your old plasma and they put in a man-made synthetic plasma. We had our first treatment Saturday night, Sunday morning, they were in there doing rehab. I was losing so much ability and capability that they wanted to make sure that the muscles didn't get weak. First time with a walker was that Sunday afternoon. Pastor Matt and Sherry were there with the kids and I'm soaked. Um, and the walker is just making all kinds of noise because I'm using it as a prop instead of really walking. He was pulling so, concrete up. Yeah, it, I'm surprised they don't have grooves in the floor. After we got done with the fifth treatment, our neurologist came in. He's like, you've shown such great progress already that we're not going to worry about treatment six and seven. They decided to go ahead and put us into a inpatient therapy. We were approved for 14 days at inpatient. By eight, we were up and leaving. We had gone from barely being able to use a walker to left the inpatient center walking with a cane. And then we went into outpatient therapy starting the 1st of October. My first goal was I wanted to be back to work October 1st, and they just kind of like, mm, yeah, okay. My second goal was to be driving again by the end of September, October 1st. 
And then the third goal that probably got the most eye rolls of anything is my goal was to run 5K on Thanksgiving Day. And I can almost see the eyes roll from the back of their head. They're like, yeah, right. You know, you can't even walk to the bathroom right now, you, let alone, you know, you're gonna be going to the, doing a 5K here in three months. Michelle had him put a scripture verse up on the board. It was one that the Lord had given to me in July, and I had no idea why he had given me that particular verse. It was just one that I knew he had given me. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, Jeremiah 29, 11. He also had given me another one that said, um, the Lord himself goes before you. I will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. When we get that diagnosis, we knew whatever happened, if it was as good as it got, it would be okay because God was gonna be there no matter what. With GBS, as it's called, the nerves will regenerate. We were told that it could be anywhere from 18 months to 24 months. So her and I went out on October the 25th and ran a mile in 1056. So in two months time, we went from not being able to walk to running a mile in less than 11 minutes. We did a 5K that Thanksgiving day. It was actually a minute faster than I had done it the year before. And I ran three 5Ks in that first year. And each time I ran one, it would be about a minute or two quicker than the one before. Along the way, I've been able to tell my story two or three different times to different size groups. And one thing I always, you know, I start off with is, what do you take for granted? Do you take getting up out of the seat for granted? Do you take being able to feed yourself for granted? You don't know how God will use what's happening to you, but if you're willing to step out and do your part, God will use it. The Lord says, I go before you and I will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And if somebody's gonna do that for you, there ain't no reason to be afraid or to be scared or to have discouragement. I reassured him that, um, did he have the courage to believe that when he gets old that I would still take care of him? And yes. I said, so yes, just remember, when my turn comes, take good care of me too. <laughs>